All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to, uh, let's say, episode number three in our Get Out of Your Own Way 15-minute webinar series. Um, hashtag Guyao. Today, I'm really excited to be talking about sustained giving as our third part of the series. So for those of you who maybe haven't joined us yet, uh, I'm Taylor Shanklin. My team here and I at Kimbia love online fundraising and working with nonprofits to help them achieve their online fundraising goals. And that is our jam. So Kelly is on the line here with me as well. She will be manning the questions box. If you have a question, please just type it into the questions box and she will um, interrupt me or help ask get that question asked so that we can answer it. Um, we will be recording this and sending out the slides after the webinar. So stay tuned for that in your inbox if you want to share it along with someone else who maybe couldn't attend or if you want to just watch a rerun. Um, all right, so let's get going. If you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, follow us at Kimbia Inc. and follow me at T Shank Cycles and hashtag Google. All right, and I think our I think our video sharing is going to work today for the recording. So um, as with the other webinars in this series, I'm all about bringing practicality in a very short amount of time. So today we're going to be talking about sustained giving and some practical tips. Um, both from a strategic point of view and also from a just tools you can use technology point of view. So my analogy with the ketchup bottle is the glass one is beautiful, but the plastic upside down one is a little bit more practical and it still looks nice. So let's get to that version of our online fundraising and sustained giving program. Okay, so I want to do a poll. We've been doing polls at the beginning of this, and I want to just get a sense for those in the audience here on who feels like they're currently leaving money on the table in regards to sustained giving. So let me get that poll going. All right. So let me know, like, do you feel like, yes, we could definitely improve upon sustained giving? Um, do you feel like you've got a sustained giving program and like it's doing its job, it's doing okay, it's, you know, trucking along? Or uh, do you feel like you just, you need some work, you don't have a sustained giving program, or maybe you have one, but it's not great and you feel like you're leaving money on the table? Let me know what you think. All right, let's see. Okay, so, so far I'm going to close this poll down um, in just a second, but we've got 90% saying, let's see, I'll share the results here. Okay, we've got 90% that said, yes, we could definitely improve our sustainer program. 10% said somewhat, and nobody said we've got a great sustained giving program. I do feel like this is an area uh, for improvement in a lot of the conversations I've been having with clients we work with here at Kimbia, um, other organizations, friends in the industry who are in fundraising that I talk to that feel like sustained giving is a real area of opportunity and growth. And I think it is too. So that's why I want to talk about it today. Okay, how do I close down this poll? Hide results. There we go. All right. And we're back. So three tips. Tip number one. First is to define your model and connect it to impact. The connect to impact is something that I think is crucial. Um, and I see organizations struggle with this, or I see them sometimes thinking that they're connecting the dollar ask to the impact, but really the messaging is unclear. So here's where I want you to think about things in a little bit of a different manner. Think about your sustained giving program like it's a product. I wrote a blog on this last week and we'll send out the link um, with the webinar slides because I think there's a real opportunity to sort of wrap your heads around the, the messaging and the quote packaging of your sustained giving program as a product. There's some organizations that are doing a great job of this and I want to talk about that. So one model with that being said is defining 
a very specific impact. So you see this with the adopt an animal or adopt a child um, types of programs where you adopt um, the impact really is, is what it is. And it ties that sort of, it's, it's, it's just a way to think of it like you're selling something. This is something that they're buying into on a monthly, regular basis. And because they're doing that, they're seeing the product that they're buying. They're seeing the panda that they're adopting. Um, and then they're getting regular updates about the panda and how their money is helping the pandas. Um, I also think, let's say you're not an animal organization or you don't have something that you feel is you know, packageable in that same way. Here's another organization of showing impact and tying the monthly amount to something you're actually able to do with that. So I love this example of, you know, providing a graphic and visual representation of $10 a month stencils in a drain storm. $15 a month provides bags and gloves for stream pickup. $75 a month installs one rain barrel at a school. That is a very, very specific thing that the donor sees that their donation is going to make an impact on. It's like they're buying a product. They're buying your impact. Then there's also the recurring revenue model. And I'll kind of move my video up and down as I need to. Um, this is an example of a sustaining donation form on KLRU where they are saying, you know, your gift provides sustainability for us. Being a monthly sustaining donor gives us recurring revenue. Um, it's an evergreen impact. So there's two different kind of models. It's the very specific X dollar per month, give us X. And then there's also the, we just need to be supported on a regular monthly basis. You help us keep the lights on. You help us continue all of these programs. And so there's a couple different ways to do it. And I think one thing that's really important at the start um, of beginning a sustained program, or if you're thinking about tweaking yours, to really think through, like, is it clear what our model is? Is it clear what it is that we're asking them to do? Is the impact clear? Okay, tip number two, Make it simple to do. So that was a little bit of strategy. I'm gonna. Oh yeah, go ahead, Kelly. Is there a question? I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you with it. Yeah, there was a question that was relevant to tip number one. Sure. Um, and the question was, do you have any examples of marketing the impact as a product for higher education? Ooh, I don't off the top of my head, but I will dig some up for you. Um, we'll get I your, do actually. Do you have uh, some Kelly I that you can think you know, of that we have? Yeah. So I think um, in some of the giving days I've seen, mm -hmm. they've done scholarships where yes. like a certain amount of money for a scholarship. So you can get one kid through one year of, of school or something like that. I love that. Yes, scholarship is a great way to, or school projects um, at higher ed universities too. We'll see, um, we'll see school projects and that's a way to show the impact. Like we were able to, you know, replace the, desks or something like that. Um, whatever it is that you can say, like the money went to X. So if Kelly and I will actually look up and see if we've got some very specific things we can send to you as a follow-up and um, we'll do that. I'm sure we've got some case studies and, and examples of organizations doing that that we can send to you as a follow-up. Sound good? Anything else? That was a great question. That's it for now. Thanks, okay. Shelby. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Shelby. Good question. Okay, so the second tip is use technology to make it simple to do, to make it simple to become a sustained donor. So once you get the story right and the story of impact right, make sure it's just easy to do. I mean, this is in line with what we've talk, been talking about with the rest of the Guyao series is just Easy, easy, easy. People's attention spans are just like this. And you've got to make it as easy as possible. Technology is making that easier to do. So here's just a couple of examples um, of how to do that. I like this example of a donation form 
that is made possible by a technology we actually have here at Kimbia, which is called Simple Pay. And what it does is it makes it easy for donors who've already given to your organization to get a unique, secure link specific to them in an email that you would send to click on it, to hit a donation form, and to be given this option to choose a credit card that they've already used before. A credit card is all, you know, has a secure token, all still stored on the payment gateway, but it's uh, that unique token is put back onto the form. So it recognizes them. And again, it makes it just that much easier for them to say, oh, they recognize me. I don't have to fill in all of my prior billing information. Um, yep, use this credit card again, or no, that one expired. Let me put in a new card and they can do that. Uh, Pre-filling as a much historical donor and billing information as possible. So if your system doesn't allow for something like this, but it does allow for you to pre-fill in like the name and the billing address and that sort of information, do as much as you can to make it like a one, two, oops, that's supposed to be a three, <laughs> one, two, three, link, click from email, confirm, yes, this looks right, submit. And I'll show an example of that. Also make it very, very obvious on your donation form that they can either give a single gift or a monthly gift. So this is another example of a client using a Kimbia form where we have something that's called a form chooser widget. And it allows you to toggle on a single page, a single form between a single gift and monthly gift. Now there's also options um, on pretty much anything out there in the market that you know, you can choose a radio button, one-time gift or single gift, and Kimbia has that too. And we also have this um, monthly versus single on the page. So look at what you're using and see if there's a way to, from a user experience perspective, just simplify the process when someone's hitting your website to make that gift. Any questions, Kelly? Not right here. It was as easy as one, two, two. As easy as one, two, two. <laughs> I was making that slide too fast, I think. Um, sometimes I need to tell myself to slow down. Okay, so tip number three, last and final tip of today, and then I'll get into a couple of examples the way that I have um, in the other webinars in this series, is to segment and upgrade people appropriately. Appropriately. I think that is very, very important. Don't just up, you know, ask for an upgrade of the same dollar amount for everyone that you're sending this to. It's very, very important to look at your data and look for patterns of behavior. So you don't have to be a data scientist. You can do some sorting in Excel, looking for patterns of behavior, um, you know, the gift amount the last time they gave, when did they give last? Was it three months ago? Was it six months ago? Was it 12 months ago? Were they a sustained donor and donor in the past? And now something happened to where you're not seeing it that hit on a monthly basis anymore. Maybe their credit card expired and you need to reach out to them about updating it. All of those things, I think it's really important to like, Download your data from whatever your system you're using to look at what people are doing already in online giving for your organization and then segment into groups based on when they donated, how much they donated. Because the last thing you want to do is send someone a message that's inappropriate for where they are in their giving history with you. So a couple of just very quick tips um, to do this too are to upgrade them by a small amount, maybe every six to 12 months. So instead of saying like, hey, we noticed you're giving $10 a month. How about you give $25 a month? That might just be too much for people. It might make them angry. It might make them feel like, huh, you're kind of asking me for a lot more. How about going from $21 a month to $23 a month or $10 a month to $12 or $13 a month. Because if you slowly upgrade them, think about it as a marathon and not a sprint. Over time, you'll eventually see that they move the needle up 
a little bit more. Uh, the graph that I have here on the right side is, um, data is a little bit old, but good. I got it from the Nonprofit Pro from an article I was reading on this yesterday. And it shows over on the left in the blue, that is the average, the lifetime revenue per, per one-time donor. So they're moving the needle up slowly over time. But the lifetime value over the course of these four years of a sustaining donor from 2013 to 2016 is a lot more. So if you've got the message right, if the technology is easy to use and clear to use, and if you are appropriately messaging to them to move them up the ladder at the right time, at the right amount, I think you will see progress. Any questions on that? We do have one from okay. Kate. The question okay. is, is there a best practice for set amounts on your giving site? So 5, 10, 15, mm -hmm. 25, 50, and what would you recommend when just beginning a program? Yeah, so I think there are, and I think it depends on your organization. So what I would do, again, is look at your organization's data. What are people giving right now in terms of one-time gifts? And see if you can find um, an average gift amount. So let's say you look at your data and you find, okay, our average gift amount is um, – $35 and then maybe there's even like another spike at $60 and then maybe there's another spike at a hundred dollars um, Start with those kind of like average gift amount spikes that you find in your data That's my recommendation that might be different for for some organizations. It might be 10 20 40 for some organizations. It might start at 30 60 you know, 90, something like that. So I think it really depends on, again, looking at your supporters' patterns of behavior and um, choosing something that's appropriate to where they're already giving, if that makes sense. Does that help, Kate? And I think I think this would also be one that you're going to want to test on a regular basis, mm -hmm. right, Taylor? Definitely, definitely. And when it comes to starting a sustained program, um, I think, and this is my personal opinion, I think breaking it down into small bite-sized chunks and showing them how, you know, if you don't have, let's say you want to get everyone to $250 a year, um, but you don't want to go out with this ask of, hey, give us $250, right? Because a lot of people might see that and say, like, I don't have an extra 250 bucks right now, but I do still really like your organization, Breaking it down into that incremental monthly amount, I think, can help people to, um, you know, they can help, they can budget for it. Um, it doesn't feel like such a big, like, oh, I need that $250 this month, you know, but maybe they can do $25 a month over time and they can budget for that. So I think, like, again, in your messaging, I think the point is to show them that you can help us on a monthly basis with a small amount um, that makes sense for you. But again, look at the patterns. If someone has been giving you, um, this is where you might find donors that kind of surprise you. If you look at, oh, someone's been giving me every year, you know, $300, like over the course of the year from various campaigns, but it's kind of like it's spiky, it's, it's all over the place. That's where you might say like, hey, we've noticed that you've been a, an amazing supporter of ours. Have you thought about just signing up for our monthly giving program? This is what you get out of it. You know, that's again, tying it back to thinking about it like a product um, where they see both the value of impact that you're bringing to them as a donor um, and also to those who you're serving at your organization. Um, I think tying that impact back to them is really important. Um, what is it that makes them feel good about it? Um, telling them about how much they are a part of that impact by buying into this kind of monthly um, product and program. 
Okay. Hey, Taylor. Uh, so to, to wrap up with Kate's question, um, she did say that thanks, that was helpful. And I Great. think her, her response is she's going to work off of the first time average gift amounts and then test different structures. I think that's perfect, Kate. Um, and we wish you luck. And then with, in regards to what you were really just talking about, Taylor, we had a question from Norman saying, mm -hmm. would some monthly donors resent further appeals for upgrades when they're already donating monthly? And I think Taylor was really just diving into that right now with kind of how you make personal reaches to them and yes. say, you know, how much you appreciate what they're already doing and how just a little bit more could help this much more. Mm -hmm. exactly. But did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I mean, that's why I would go back to the, um, you know, don't try to upgrade them and, and shoot for the moon right away. You know, do it a little bit by a little bit. Um, and, and do, if it is someone that you're seeing is giving quite a bit, then do that personal outreach to them, um, you know, pick up the phone and call them or um, just make sure that if you're sending a mass email communication or something like that to that group, that, um, you know, maybe there's a group of people who fit that pattern of behavior, um, make sure they're getting a mass communication that is relevant to that group. Um, I think that's where segmentation and messaging really comes into play. There was something else that I just thought of, and it slipped my mind, so maybe I'll think about it again um, as the examples. If anybody wants to talk about this more or you ever, you know, have some ideas and you want to bounce them around, please just, like, shoot us an email. We love to get on the phone and, and talk about this stuff and, and hash it out a little bit. So i um, happy to, you know, take a look at what you're doing and offer some advice and recommendations based on your particular organization and situation. Okay, so I want to just show a couple of quick examples getting into um, one is just tying the impact. And this is a form, um, this is YMCA of Fort Worth. I actually used to go work out there when I lived in Fort Worth. Um, had nice facilities like this YMCA. And this is a very, very simple way. It's not a hugely technical undertaking to do what they've done here, which is just applying a label to their donation amounts. And one thing that I really like, a lot of times I see the donation amount first, like over on the left side, dash supports water safety and swim lessons. I like that they are starting with the impact and then you see the dollar amount because this is the sort of thing where I might say, oh, wow, well, yeah, okay, I've got kids that resonates with me. I definitely want to help other kids who don't have the means to do swim lessons to take those swim lessons. Um, so I love that they are showing the impact first where your eye catches over here, reading left to right first. Also, again, very easy to choose if they want this to be a one-time payment or a monthly payment. And so it's like all on the same form. I think that's a big thing is having one donation form landing page that allows for either one-time or monthly recurring. And they've got their set up to where you can do, you have a couple of different options. You can either do monthly or you can break it up into quarterly gifts and some people might want to do that as well. Okay, so that's an example of kind of like tying the impact, making it simple. Another thing I want to show, and this is just a, a demo site that I've got, is the um, that simple pay thing that I was talking about. So this is an example of a form where if I've never donated and I, land, I got a link in an email, clicked on it, came to the donation form, I would see all of these normal things that I see, right? Donation amounts, one time versus monthly. And here's where I put in all of my billing information and everything like that. Um, now, let's say I had given to your organization before you were using Simple Pay. You sent me an email with my unique link in it and I clicked on it and I landed on this same form. I would get to here where I see same things, dollar amount, one time versus monthly, but it's taking out that step of the billing and I'm saying, oh yeah, okay, uh, I'll, I'll use that credit card again. I have to authorize it so there's a level of security. I've got to type in my billing zip, zip code and submit it. That's just a way of using technology 
to make it that much faster, that much easier, that much more the way that people are already used to um, being able to go online and, and, you know, go to Amazon and click uh, and like buy something if you're a regular Amazon customer um, and, and do that sort of like very quick get them through the door um, user experience. Okay, that is what I've got for today. I know I went a little bit over, but you guys had some great questions and I'm really, really glad that you asked those questions today and that we had a chance to talk about it. So next week is the last part of this series. And um, one thing I'll say about that is if you've really been enjoying this and enjoying this format, please let us know because we will keep doing it if you like it. Um, if you don't like it, let us know because then we won't, you know, it's all about, just like Kelly said, it's about testing. You know, we want to, we want to test and see what you guys are enjoying and preferring as well in terms of the content and stuff that we're putting out there to help you. So let us know. I've got a poll at the end of this. Please let us know what you think. Next week, I'm not going to be talking about technology around online fundraising per se, and I'm not going to be talking really about fundraising. I'm going to be talking about communication. I think this is something that is a very, very important thing for us to be talking about more in the nonprofit space. Um, I find that, you know, whether you are a very large organization, a medium-sized organization, or a small organization and going around and talking to all the clients we work with, all of my friends in the industry. Communication is something where we can all improve upon at all times. And so what I want to do is share tips to disrupt the silos, to communicate more effectively. Um, and some of it will be, again, strategic. Some of it will be some of the tools and um, technologies that I use to help you know, my team and I communicate together more effectively. So um, stay tuned for next week. If you want to see a demo of Kimbia, I know I, I show Kimbia examples in these, please just email us at info at Kimbia.com. If you've got a question specific for me, email me at taylor at Kimbia.com, and I'd love to email you. And if you want a coffee mug, just email me at taylor at Kimbia.com. Okay. All right. Hashtag Guyao. Thank you, everyone. Kelly, are there any other questions? I'm able to stick around if there are. There's not. Thank you for your time today. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.